So in the in this transition, Tesla today posted a, posted a a post where they went through all that Tesla has achieved since 2018 when under Elon's leadership. So they talked about all the milestones from 2018, 19, 20, 22, of course, 23, 21, 22, 33, 24. And at the very last post, they said, deployed two Optimus bots performing tasks in the factory autonomously. So we know we knew that from Milan Kovac a uh, couple of months ago, he said that they have two bots in the factory, but they were being tested. Now this sentence seems to make it sound like that they're actually already working. Um, Scott, you're here. Tell us, do you think that this is actual useful work and it's an actual bot that's actually working now, or is it still in testing mode? Uh, yeah, it, it's hard to tell. I, I think I'll lean on the side of caution that it's still probably in a testing mode. And maybe it's what we had previously seen in an update about a month ago of the, the robot picking the batteries off the battery line. Th that's what my guess is. So it's it sounds like it's two robots perhaps doing two different tasks and it's doing it fully autonomously. So they're probably satisfied with, um, let's say, its ability to do it. That's that's kind of what it sound, sounds like from that update, that it's doing a pretty good job at that of what's that particular task. What we don't know is whether it's actually able to fully keep up with the rate that's required Looking at that battery line, looks like it's fairly simple to keep up with that. So it it, it may be limited to the task you can do right now, depending upon um, how rapid it's it's able to to keep up and, and move with the job. If, is it able? Because remember, a, a true definition of useful work is it should be able to do the same job at the same pace as a human operator and do it for a similar kind of duration and with the same kind of quality. So what they might be doing is picking like the lowest of the low hanging fruit where it is very simple to do, it is not very strenuous, and then they just have to, to move up from there. So it's not surprising. I mean, we, we've expected that they would have had um, something in the factories by now. They've hinted and hinted and hinted at it, and we even see a little bit of it. And I think Milan also kind of hinted at that um, the day before yesterday in his post. And now we're seeing it again from the official uh, Tesla post. I'm not sure if the wording is almost the same, but it's, it's very similar between the two. Okay. And then Jeff, since you've got some experience with manufacturing and so forth, the line, the line before they said that they've now deployed two bots performing tasks in the factory autonomously, it says in the last over the last two years, we developed three major design revisions of Optimus and four revision revisions of the hand, with Optimus autonomously navigating daily in our office and labs. I mean, that is pretty fast <laughs> over two years based on your understanding of how you know these design revisions are. And come on, everybody has to admit that 90% of people on this audience did not believe that they would have an actual bot working in an actual factory this year. Scott and I were being ridiculed <laughs> whenever we said something like this, and we had to push off our, you know, our belief, but they, they, they went ahead of most people, right? Scott or Jeff, can you speak to that? About you being ridiculed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Come on. Actually, I want um, to point back to you, Jeff, because you know, you're know you one that said it's going to take a long time. Aren't you uh, sh shocked a little bit that it's here now? No, because, I mean, the, to me, like these are milestones that can be fudged. So there's milestones that are real, and there's milestones that are kind of like, mm. okay, so it was somebody was somebody fired? Was a human being fired? And was a human being permanently replaced? It'd be the you know the question. If the answer is yes, well then yeah, I would say the milestone's been achieved. But right now, I think they're gathering data, and I think they're kind of like you know everybody else is showing a bot walking around and doing something in the factory. So I think they want to do that too. I'm not downplaying it by the way either. Um, I think it's good. I think I think this is a step in the process. I just don't know that they're actually displacing human labor yet, and I think that's the end goal. Um, so in terms of uh, iterations, I think when, you, when you're when you pre-production um, and you know, you're not working off production tools, I don't know what they're working off of, by the way. I don't know what, you know, what's the hardness of these tools. I don't know what they're actually using. But the point is, is you could move a little bit faster and you could basically do, you know, we call them, you know, iterative, you know, design spins. You know, basically, like in the mobile phone world, basically every nine weeks 
you are doing, um, you can do a new rev where you release, you fabricate, you bring product in, you build it at a system level, you test it, and then you, you formulate your changes for the next spin. And depending on the complexity of the product, it can be in, in, the, in the types of materials involved in making the product, that can span anywhere from like eight to 12 weeks uh, to do a design cycle. So the key will be is which version are they releasing for mass production off of uh, full production tools? I think that would be uh, the key, the key question to understand. Because that will need the extended timeline to build the production tools, to test them, to validate them. And uh, yeah. Okay. So that's the hardware. The hardware is is at least, if not on track, it's a little faster than most people are thinking, that they actually have now two bots in the lab, in the factory, doing autonomous work. What about the software? What about the brains? So we, you know, just in the last week, there's so many uh, news information um, that was sent out. Like the big one was Gigafactory of Compute was announced to be in Memphis. And they are talking, a Gigafactory of Compute for that's XAI's building. They, the way they described it was you take to two largest supercomputers, you combine them and you multiply it by four. That's what they're building. Do you guys think that the intelligence is is not only on track, but it's actually leading the pack. And if in any case, it is optimized for autonomy for the car and for the bot. How are you guys feeling about the progress that Tesla and XAI are doing? And then I guess the big question is, does Tesla get take advantage of this? Just because XAI is doing it, we can't assume that Tesla will be able to take advantage of it. Who wants to answer that question? Adrian, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, could you uh, could you repeat that a second? So I had to deal with something. Oh no! Anybody else heard the question? Wants to answer it first? No. It it takes me uh, probably a year to get somebody to repair my roof. <laughs> Two years to get anything else done. I cannot believe. For me, I'm I'm blown away at the 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 pace of progress at, at Tesla with their hardware, the software. I think it's more chip. Uh, limited, but no longer with uh, the H100s and H200s coming. So I, I think that the AI is going to move along a lot quicker than their their hardware. Um, but I'm blown away when I see what they're they're, they're manufacturing their own actuaries, and it's yeah, it's, it's really impressive. So I'm 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 pretty impressed with the the rate of progress. Um, I think Jeff's right in terms of you know it, it only makes a difference when you can actually use these things i think we're all pretty optimistic and you know they're testing them right now they have them in their program and i just don't know the rate of progress we're going to get um from this point on is it going to be this massive s curve um or is it just going to be linear that, that, that that's what you know one year will tell so getting back to the question about xai and its relationship with tesla uh, assuming that we have a good outcome on Thursday, are you guys expecting that there will also be some sort of relationship between XAI and Tesla a little bit more formalized, whether Tesla gets some ownership of XAI or some sort of partnership outlined? Uh, Jeff, are you following that? And what are, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I, I do have to depart here in a minute. Um, but I do think that we could be in store for, you know, a surprise on that front. I think if the control issues are resolved, I think, you know, I think that opens up the conversation because he's said multiple times that he wants to take care of long term shareholders of Tesla and SpaceX. So how do you do that? Well, you take these new companies that were formed with the proceeds from that company and you give them, you know, you give them some equity in it. And that's how you, quote unquote, you know, you take care of them. So I, I do think we're in store for, especially when there's synergies, that's the thing, especially when there can be real synergies involved with them working together and the interchangeability of resources and capital and so forth. So um, I am expecting something um, along those lines. Okay, let's uh, bring up Andre. Um, I think there'll be a, 
uh, first of all, a lot of synergy between XAI and Tesla for just some basic LLM and general kind of that integration. Um, and in terms of compute, so the Tennessee factory will be up and running in one one year. The the current notion, I believe, in the LLM training and is that there's no such thing as too much compute because even if something is computably, if there is a perfect model that solves AGI and there's a certain amount of compute that's needed, more compute will solve it faster. So if XAI is playing catch up, that is fantastic that they're building out this massive data center. Um, in terms of whether they'll give that off to Tesla at some point, I'm sure that Tesla will be the one benefiting first and foremost from it. Um, in terms of XAI ownership um, owned by Tesla, uh, I think it has, if it's going to be done, I think it has to be done with a lot of careful fiduciary approach to make sure that you don't actually uh, burn any of the existing investors into XAI. Perhaps the next round of investments that can, could be done by Tesla directly to take a significant chunk of XAI, right? Because XAI, right now, it's like, I think XAI will have the benefit of picking uh, investors first rather than having to go chase investors. So giving preference to Tesla to come in if Tesla has expanded by chance, its uh, availability of cash will be highly beneficial. Um, but in terms of direct integration beyond like just whatever LLM and general into the car, into the robo taxi style, kind of like, hey, I'm feeling like I want to go uh, have something for dinner. What do you got? Having XAI answer that. Beyond that, I don't know what kind of integration would be kind of needed. Definitely not nothing along the lines of FSD or anything like that. They'll remain with a Tesla or a Optimus. Thanks, Andre. And then Simon? Yeah, maybe I'm wrong on this, but like, I think everybody, uh, most of the retail investors would love to have a stake at XAI integrated into Tesla. We're talking from a shareholder standpoint and not um, the use of the services that XAI will, will offer. Um, I do believe that Tesla will listen to whole Mars and he's got a really excellent uh, theory of how they're getting, you're going to integrate it into the, the voice system on cars. It's going to be pretty neat, but um, in terms of ownership, I think every, I hope everybody can remember back to when they purchased Solar City and the controversy that it caused and the lawsuits. I mean, people just jumped all over that. And I think that this time around, despite the fact that it makes sense, and I think Elon was very explicit and says, this has to go through the board. It's not my call. And it needs to be voted on. And there needs to be panels set up in order to, 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 to make sure that there is no conflict of interest. I think that's why the last time they did this, where they took over or took ownership. So if Tesla starts spending money on XAI, you can only imagine the headline. Uh, they just shifted some AI chips from NVIDIA, $500 million worth of chips, and it makes front pages of, uh, of I think it was, uh, well, <laughs> Business uh, Insider, which is nothing, but CNBC one morning. Um, and we even talked about how ridiculous it was on one of our monthly newsletters. But yeah, I, I think that's the reason why it, it's, it, it makes sense, but they have to be careful. That's all. So just we're filming, we're, we're having this space on Tuesday. And today, Elon Musk dropped this lawsuit that he had against OpenAI and Sam Altman. He withdrew his lawsuit. So just wondering if <laughs> this has, is a coincidence that he did this today, the day after um, Apple announced a partnership with OpenAI, is the day after he, you know, was pretty upset and just very concerned about the privacy issues that might be happening with people giving the information to OpenAI. If anything, he should have, you know, accelerated or expanded this lawsuit. But um yeah, I guess we're all just going to speculate here, but it's it's interesting of the timing that he withdrew this lawsuit today. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? Well, it was going for a hearing, I think, on Wednesday, and where it could have been dismissed if there wasn't sufficient. Um, it was kind of built off of, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, it looked, they didn't have like a formal contract and. So, I mean, it basically, 
if, if he gets in front of this and 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 uh, and drops it before it gets dismissed, well, then it's not necessarily a loss. It's less of a loss, right? So I think that may have been a bit of a tactic, um, but who knows? Yeah, that actually, that makes a lot of sense. I'm glad you're still here, Jeff. Um, yeah. yeah, and I am dropping here soon, but thanks for, yeah. uh, for having no me problem. on. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate you. So, yeah, take, we've yeah, take yeah, care, we've had quite a bit of other news as well. Um, the, the other one is, you know, Tesla, Elon saying that model, there is not going to be a refresh Model Y. I was one of those people that was waiting for the Model Y coming out. Does anybody have thoughts on that? Um, you know, the, do you guys think that it, it, that, that he, they're just not going to, because there's rumors that there's going to be a refresh Model Y in China. Or are they holding this back because it's part of all the changes that they're going to make with these new versions of these new vehicles? Why do the refresh if you might have other kinds of vehicles first? Too bad we lost that, Jeff, there. Sat, do you have a thought on that? I think we're losing folks here. So let's uh, go ahead and close the, the space down. Thank you guys very much. Did you, uh, I hang on, did you see the, uh, did you see the thing that uh, Todd Marin posted? No, regarding that? Elon's compensation package from three hours ago? No. Well, so, sorry, explain. Yeah, I put it up at the top for those who want to read, but he's basically voicing support for the compensation package. I put it up at the top so people can look at the actual post itself. Really good stuff, man. Looks like he recently joined. Like X. So what does it mean, though? Who This guy is a former general counsel at Tesla. Yeah, just go look it up. Uh, just go look at his name. It's really amazing. He's got a lot of history with Tesla. And of course, he's a legal counsel, I believe. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what the significance of that is. Former Tesla general counsel. So he supports it. There's quite a number of people that stood up, right? Like yesterday, you had Ashok Alaswamy. You had the, um, the director of supply chain. You had Milan Kovac all write very lengthy posts of support for Elon and saying how great he is. Yeah. It's actually kind of fascinating that the people who've been quite a while at Tesla, even the OGs that no longer work there, actually in support, in support of the pay package. That should be a sign alone, in my opinion. I think that's really interesting. Well, we'll see what happens. This Thursday is the big day. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Appreciate you guys. We'll do this every uh, every Tuesday. Please follow CyberBulls and follow these speakers. Um, they devote a lot of time and research. Appreciate it, everybody. Bye-bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.